All right, folks, I'm going to walk you through how to fix a bug that I've seen and some of us have experienced in some of our favorite presets that we download um, from of our some from of our favorite uh, patch makers for PodGo. Uh, it's this particular bug where you can assign multiple parameters to a single foot switch. Uh, so you'll see this in David Hislop's patches to turn on ambient. You'll see it in worship tutorials, Alex Strabel and others. Where you step on the foot switch, you're expecting parameter changes to take effect, and the opposite happens. It can be really frustrating if you're performing and you're expecting parameters to be engaged. The foot switch is off, makes you wonder, do I have too much reverb? Do I have not enough reverb, as an example? Uh, so I want to show you how to fix this um, in a particular patch. I hope that line six will uh, fix the bug that even makes this possible. Um, but in the meantime, this should be able to uh, help you deal with that on some of your, your favorite patches. So I recently observed this in Alex's patch for the matchless. And it's a very simple example of, um, that we can fix. And you can apply this to other patches too. I fixed it in numerous. So let's take a look at what the bug looks like. So this is downloaded um, from the patch I purchased from Alex. I'm just going to import it into Podgo Edit. And we'll see what it looks like here. Okay, so looking at foot switch three, um, see assignments, we can see that foot switch three is controlling the decay and the mix of the glitz. So let's go over to the glitz and see what that looks like. So here we go. On the glitz, we see three, three. We know that these two parameters are assigned. If the foot switch is on, meaning the light is on, we expect the decay and the mix to be at these values. And if the foot switch is off, we expect the decay in the mix to move down to these values. Uh, that's what these little triangles mean. And that's what happens when you um, set a foot switch parameter and uh, drag those triangles. So let's watch what happens when I step on foot switch three and pay attention right here on Podgo edit on the mix. You see it kind of hesitates just a little bit. You see on the pod go edit, the foot switch is off, but in fact, the parameters are still in the on position. That's, you know, this is the bug. Now, if I step on the foot switch again, the foot switch is on, it's illuminated, and the parameters actually went backwards in the wrong direction. So it's having the exact opposite effect that we want it to have, which can be, um, pretty irritating, if not embarrassing, uh, during a performance. So I want to show you how to fix this and, um, explore a little bit about the Podgo patch files, uh, to help you understand how to do that. So I'm going to actually export the patch. Uh, something I do with any patch, particularly some of the older ones is I always import it into Podgo. And if I make any changes to it, I will re-export it. I'm going to export this and just call it bug. Save that. Uh, so we're going to actually open up this file and take a look inside. You may have done this if you've deleted the, the wah pedal or the line out blocks or other blocks in your pod go. Um, I'm going to show you a program that I use to do it because it actually makes what could be a pretty intimidating looking file uh, a little bit easier to manage. So the program's called uh, VS Code or Visual Studio Code. It's what developers use to uh, write applications. Uh, what's it, the, the PodGo file is arguably code. Um, it's nothing to be intimidated by, but Visual Studio Code makes it a little bit easier for, um, for us to see what's happening. Uh, Visual Studio Code is free. You can download it for your uh, Windows, Linux, or Mac machines, so you can use it anywhere. I'm actually going to use the online version um, cause it's a pretty simple change. Um, if you don't like installing applications to your computer, uh, you don't need to. Uh, so here's VS code and let's just go ahead and drag this, uh, bug file into it. And, uh, there we go. There is the, um, the contents of the, of the preset. And I'm going to make this a little bit easier to read. And one of the reasons I like VS code is if you look down here at uh, this area where it says plain text and click on it and select auto detect, 
it's going to change some of the colors to make it a little bit easier to understand uh, what's happening inside this patch, which can be useful when trying to uh, debug some of these issues. So I'm going to go ahead and just make some more room here. And I'm going to save a copy of this. So that um, we'll see the, the three different presets that we modified here. Call this one fix. OK, and I'll zoom in a little bit here for uh, so it makes it a little bit easier to read. OK, so VS Code, in addition to the colors, has some other useful features to help us um, navigate this you know, rather large file. See so here, if I move to the left, these little downward facing triangles um, appear. And if I click this triangle, it'll, it'll collapse everything that's inside of it. So this overall preset is you know, 700 lines long. There's a lot going on in here. Um, we don't need to really change a lot. So using these little um, these little triangles, these little downward facing areas can help you navigate what could be this somewhat long and intimidating file. Uh, so we'll just do a, you know, like a quick glance of what's in the file, and then we'll we'll dive into what to look for to um, fix this parameter. So you can see here, you know, the the name of the preset, uh, what version um, of PodGo and PodGo Edit was used to make it at the time. And then you see a couple of different sections inside of this tone section. So you can see the controller. We'll come back to this, uh, which talks about um, what the buttons and foot switches do. You'll see inside this DSP, um, these actually contain all of your different effects and blocks. So if you uh, scroll down here, you'll recognize um, the effects loop, error parent. Uh, you, if you've deleted blocks before, this is where you'd come to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and um, hide some of those. You'll see some other foot switch assignments here, um, the colors, the labels that are used on the foot switches. Um, so we can hide some of those. And then we see this IR table. So this is actually um, unique indicators for any impulse responses that are loaded. I think this actually would um, just kind of show that value of whomever created the patch, what IRs they had loaded at the time. That's probably the longest part of the block. We'll um, hide that. And then we see snapshots. Uh, so the snapshots, you can see um, you know, the names of them, the tempo, some of the, the parameters you can change, what blocks are on, what blocks are off. Uh, controllers, we remember that section from up above of what foot switches are enabled as you navigate that. And then any of the snapshot values that you change, you'll see those um, snapshots indicated in here. So there are uh, four snapshots. And so we'll just go ahead and collapse all those. Snapshot one, two, three, and four. So that's what's going on inside of your, um, your PodGo patches. So let's take a look at what's happening in um, the controller section, because that's where we're having the problem. So you see um, a controller set up here. You see the, the drive um, parameters that are changed with uh, on block four for a particular channel volumes changed in block four. You see block seven, block eight, and you see block nine. You, you'll recognize decay and mix. And so, you know, block nine is the last uh, block in our signal chain here. And you'll recognize that, you know, essentially this is declaring that this controller uh, will toggle the decay in the mix on the patch. So, you know, we saw that they became the, the status of the foot switch being enabled is what uh, threw us off. And you'll see here that what this foot switch enabled value is different on the two um, the parameters. One says true and one says false. Um, and so I think that's what's going on here when you step on that button on the foot switch and, you know, the foot switch is backwards of what you expect it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and change this one from false 
to true. That they are in aligned. And then I'm going to save my file. Now let's reimport this, uh, what we just modified here and watch what happens. So here's the fixed file that I just saved. We'll import it over here. Load it up. And it, it looks exactly like um, the original patch that I imported. If I go over to the glitz, I see that um, the parameters are at the on state. And I see that the foot switch is illuminated. So I'm going to step on the switch and let's see what happens. The foot switch is off. The light is not illuminated and the values went to their, uh, the, the proper positions that we expect. And now we'll turn it back on. Foot switch is on. They're in the true value and that's what we want. Uh, we want confidence to know that when we step on that parameter change, that we know uh, what to expect from it. So I hope that helps. Um, there are some other cool things you can do with the PodGo patch files when you edit it in VS Code. Um, I might do some other videos on uh, some of the things I'm experimenting with on that. But don't be afraid to open these files up and take a look at what's um, happening inside of them. Um, you know, if you make it, if you save a value and you go to import it and it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't compute for PodGo, it won't let you uh, actually import it. So don't be afraid to um, change any of these values and, um, you know, experiment for things you can do outside of the PodGo app. So that's it. Hope this helps and uh, take care.